So Travis is in the Seacoast area, lives in Rye. Um, he's been, um, <laughs> he's had the pleasure of listing his own house uh, in this, right at the, the beginning of this. And, you know, it brings up another point of sometimes a spouse will have a different level of risk as the, um, the other spouse. And so I think Travis is like, let's go out there and show it. And his wife may say, all right, but let's like make sure we're safe. We've got new, newborns and things like that. So Travis, why don't you tell us both sides of listing the house and being the realtor? All right, cool. Thanks, Adam. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so we've, we were going to put our house on the market at the end of March. We had lots of plans for uh, staging and some intelligent fix ups and some things that we recommend our sellers to do. And then all of a sudden there were no vendors or people that we would really felt comfortable having over to the house to do that kind of stuff. So I unfortunately had to limp along and get some things ready. Um, so from a seller's perspective, yeah, it's a little nerve wracking to figure, okay, well, how do we have people into our home and, and keep it, keep ourselves safe and our family members safe and, you know, not infect, you know, a parent or another relative or, you know, a senior team member or a colleague or whatever. So it's been, like I said, it's been a little nerve wracking, but I think as long as, as we take precautions, the same precautions we're recommending our sellers to take that we can do that. So we're, we're trying to limit traffic uh, by asking the buyers to show their pre-approval before they even show up to the property, which eliminates a lot of those uh, looky loos, uh, quote unquote. Um, as a listing agent, a lot of times I'll get a, a call from an, another realtor that says, hey, I've got these buyers that are coming over and they want to see the house tomorrow at four. And I'll say, well, what are they looking for? Do they know that it's on the golf course? Do they know this? Do they know that? No, no, I don't know. They're at Zillow lead or whatever. And so this really screens out a lot of the people that may not be quite as serious or have, you know, aren't, aren't qualified to buy the property. So that helps us feel a little bit safer just by having less traffic. And then um, just some other precautions, you know, wearing booties, wearing gloves, not touching anything. If they, you, we're asking them if they've had any symptoms, not to, uh, not to come over. Um, so really just kind of taking the same precautions you would if you were going out in public, but um, wiping everything down with the Clorox wipes when they come back. So as far as the seller, do I feel comfortable? Yeah. My, is my wife worried? Yeah. But it's not like we can live in a bubble for the next 60 days and accomplish our family's goals. So it's, it's really nice to have that perspective. Uh, like, like we're kind of expecting our sellers to do right now as well. So why don't you tell us that you've done a couple of virtual open houses and, um, you know, walk <clears throat> us through what you did in, on a virtual open house. Yeah, you know, uh, been in, been in the business for for quite some time now, and it's amazing like what you can accomplish with just a, a cell phone. So um, I set up a, a virtual open house. We had people register, and we did it uh, through the same platform that you guys are here looking at today. We we did it through Zoom, and I just uh, flipped the camera around so that I could kind of tour the the property, and people could ask questions. And I had you know somebody on the phone feeding me any questions that people had that they were asking online. So that was pretty cool. It was nice to be able to get our sellers some exposure. This was, a, uh, we did one at my house and one at another listing. But it was nice to be able to get some uh, some sellers exposure to their listing without exposing them to the, to the virus. So that was pretty cool to be able to have uh, technology at our disposal to do that. As far as the virtual tours go, um, Adam, am I allowed to share my screen here? Sure. I can show, I can pull up the virtual tour that, uh, that you set us up with. Let me just try. So Adam got us this uh, cool camera that does these 3D tours. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, you're good. So we've got this cool uh, 3D camera that uh, lets you know comes in and people can scroll around. And Robin, don't judge my uh, shoe rack here <laughs> uh, or the wallpaper. <laughs> But so um, it comes in and it spins and it takes a 360 virtual um, or a 360 photo of the entire room and it lets you uh, tour the house as if you were standing in it. That's awesome. So this way buyers could come in and go, oh, uh, no, I don't want a house that I can see the neighbors or, oh my gosh, look at this kitchen. Yeah, we got to get over here and see that. So this is one, another tool that we're really doing to showcase um, the property to help uh, filter out some some people that may not be interested, but also pique the interest of people that uh, that may have, might have been on the fence and encourage them to to get over and and make an offer. So yeah, and one of the things that we're we're talking with sellers about is um, making sure that 
we have the a strategy that aligns with what they, they want to do because sometimes I think real estate agents will just blast everything out there and leave nothing to ask questions about. So people might rule out a house without, that's why I didn't do the 3D tours before, the Matterport tours, because uh, I didn't want people to think that they've got the whole uh, picture of the house and not even call us for us to give them a chance to talk about the house and quality construction, things that don't come through on, on pictures. But now, you know, this is flipped on its head. We want to give people as much information as they can so they can make decisions and they can come up and see a house. And we know if somebody's coming up and the, the seller's going through the effort and the risk now, uh, it's worth it because we, we sent them a, a 3D tour. So we talked to the seller, do we want to have this out there or do we want to wait? Because one strategy that I've been thinking about um, is just having less photos on online and, and having more backup information. So when people call, we can walk them through the, the 3D tour and, and talk about things. So, um, and so this is all new, no, new for us. So we're just, you know, even brainstorming on, on this call. So thanks, Tra anything else, Travis, or? No, um, I invited some sellers as well. And uh, I guess I wanted to show a little bit of a piece of information that I thought was interesting. Um, the, uh, I, I ran a search on some of the Seacoast towns and just in the last seven days, we've had uh, um, 45 new listings come on the market and 65 go under contract. Totally, Michael. So just even in the height of the kind of panic mode that it seems like some people are going through, it seems like people are still very interested in, uh, in, in buying real estate. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting fact. So if anybody's on the fence about whether or not it's a good time to list, talk to your your local uh, your local expert about what uh, uh, you know what the stats show because information I think is power in a time where there's a lot of fear going around. Absolutely. 